Come on. Oh, come on. We are at the Volcano Produce, which is just outside of Warrnambool. And this is Wally. Wally's our little baby Dorper sheep who was born really, really super tiny. Here we are with Wally. Hey, Wally. And just to give you a bit of perspective, all right, here is Wally's brother. <laughs> I guess he did the best in the womb. They're twins, yes. Wally was not much bigger than a can of Coke. He was around just a bit over 900 grams when he was born. We put him in a nappy and this was it. As you can see, it isn't overly big. He fit into my pocket of my jacket. So I would cart him around in, the, in my pocket as I was going around doing stuff just because he wanted to be next to somebody, you know, otherwise he'd start crying. We can't find anything on the internet of a lamb who, that's smaller in size that's survived for more than a month. Come on! We were in the middle of lambing. I saw that there was you who had just given birth. There was this thing on the ground, I didn't even recognise it as a lamb. He said, oh, you got to come, you got to come to the field. So I went out there and I just saw this little white thing on the ground, all by itself, shivering, head down. He was minutes from death, he was down and out. We could see the mum over in the distance with the other one. We tried to put them back together, but she wasn't having a bar of it. We rang uh, a couple of farmers who I knew and they said, no, never seen one or heard of a lamb that little before. It's got no chance. We were told the best thing to do was to end its life quickly, um, put it out of its misery. I just could not see this lamb surviving. So I'm a midwife and I work at the local hospital. And um, well, I guess I do deal with uh, preemie babies and little newborns. It was my wife who said, no way, <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> we knew we had to get some colostrum into him. So we caught the mum, Ben held her, and I was able to express the colostrum, which is what we do for mums sometimes with human babies. And we syringed it into his mouth, which is what we do with the babies. You pop your little finger in and he was sucking and we just syringed it in bit by bit. He's getting into it. Yep. Go, buddy. Yep. Look at him, he's standing so well. Yeah. He required 24 hour care at that stage to try and get him to pull through initially. Yeah. Go Wally, go. Look at that. Three days ago, this lamb was practically dead. Now, <laughs> he is full of life, full of beans, able to run. He's amazing. Go Wally, go. Ready? Wally, jump. Yes, good job Wally, good job. Ready? Wally, jump. Yay. There we go, one leg through. And the other one, I oh know, we're going to go somewhere, aren't we? Going to go for a walk. Wally is extremely loyal. When you're walking around, he just follows you like a shadow. He is, where are we going? Where are we going? He bars a lot. So, um, you know, we'll always know when he's hungry or when he's gotten lost in our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Oh, he knows what's going on. He knows exactly what's going on. Put it in the microwave. Yes, Wally, it's coming. And Wally will run over to his spot where he gets fed. <laughs> this has been the perfect thing for us in lockdown. Um, it's been the best distraction for the kids. Lockdown, you know, I know for a lot of people, you know, it leaves them in their houses with not a lot to do. We had a lamb to look after and it was great. I don't really like online school. I just find it really hard. I felt really calming when he was just in my arms and I could like pat him and just like the pleasure of like getting to look after a lamb this size and like he's honestly made me really happy you know he's so happy and jumpy and um, very cute as well. Ideally we would love to be able to put him back out with the rest of the flock but yeah, so far he doesn't really like being out there with the rest of them <laughs> so we'll see. I don't want him to grow up. I want him to stay a little lamb forever. 